Hello, my name is Thomas Frank and I have a browser tab problem. I just can't seem to help myself from having 50 or 80 browser tabs open at one time and completely taking up all my computer's RAM, which is why I now have this little extension that automatically hides the browser tabs I'm not using and groups them into projects. And that's not all. Today, we're gonna break down 10 of the best browser extensions out there for boosting your productivity. And this video is sponsored by Hover. So we're gonna focus mainly on Chrome in this video since it is the most popular browser out there and it's the one that I happen to use. But if you're using something else like Firefox or Safari, fear not, a lot of these extensions are on multiple browsers. So when I call each one out, you're gonna see some icons to show which of the major browsers that extension is also on. So with all of that out of the way, let's get into our first extension, the one that I teased in the intro called Workona. This is probably my new favorite extension on Chrome because to make a bit of an admission here, I'm a really bad tab hoarder. My friends love to make fun of the fact that I often have 50 or 100 tabs open, but that's just my nature. I always have multiple research projects going on, and before I know it, the browser header bar on my computer screen is just this unintelligible mess of tiny slivers of tabs. I can't even see what they are at that point. And that's the problem that Workona helps people like me to solve. It basically gives you this dashboard where you can create multiple projects and then group your tabs into those projects. Now, if you've watched my past videos, you've probably heard me talk about an extension called tab copy, which lets me basically copy all the tab links to my clipboard, but I gotta say, this is better. In addition to letting you do that, if you wanna just paste your links somewhere else, it also saves all of your tabs in organized projects. And you can even close those tabs after saving them as resources so you can keep a bunch of different websites in a specific project without having to keep them open. You can also switch between projects and Workona actually suspends the tabs that you're not using and hides them if they're not in the open project so you only see what is relevant to the project that you're working on. So basically Workona makes context switching a lot better within Chrome, but it also encourages you to be working on one specific project at a time because you know the grouping of tabs you have open are only related to that project. Our next extension is called Habitica Pomodoro SiteKeeper, which is kind of a mouthful, but it is now my Pomodoro app of choice. So if you're unfamiliar with the Pomodoro technique, I've got a whole video on it. And I'll link to that down in the description below, but in short, it is probably the most effective and easiest to use productivity technique out there. You simply pick a task you wanna work on, set a timer, an actual timer for 25 minutes and work on just that task during the duration. Then you take a break. And because you're using an external timer to guide you and because you're reframing your task as work for just 25 minutes, it's an extremely effective way to get over the resistance you feel to doing a tough task. I use Pomodoro sessions all the time to get myself doing things that I don't want to actually do. And I've tested a lot of Pomodoro apps out there. This is now my favorite one because I use a habit tracker called Habitica. Now, if you haven't used Habitica before, it uses RPG and video game elements to sort of build a habit tracking app that keeps you a bit more motivated to track your habits, especially if you're a nerd like me. But I will note that even if you're not into the RPG stuff, Habitica is a fantastic habit tracking app, possibly one of the best out there because it's open source, which means that it has a ton of advanced features that don't cost anything, where other apps that have similar features always want you to pay, which is pretty nice. And in keeping with that way of doing things, this extension for Pomodoro timing has a lot of cool features that a lot of other Pomodoro apps that I've seen want you to pay for, like tracking your Pomodoro stats. A lot of them want you to pay for that. This one does it for free. And it does a few other cool things as well. Namely, it connects to Habitica and adds Pomodoro-based habits to your habit tracking. It also also has a site blocker, so you can add whatever sites you want to its block list, and during Pomodoro sessions, all those sites are gonna be blocked. You can also add costs to websites, and if you add a cost to a website, it's gonna be blocked all the time, even outside of Pomodoro sessions, and you can get into them for a limited amount of time by paying gold from Habitica. Now, personally, I love having this extension connected to Habitica since I use the crap out of it, but if you don't happen to use that or you want something a little less nerdy, there is another extension called Tide, which has a Pomodoro timer it's got the stat keeping for free, it's got the site blocker, so it's very similar, but it doesn't have the Habitica connection. So check that out as an alternative. Next up on our list is an extension called Audio Blogs, which translates written articles into podcast narrations that you can send to your phone and which are narrated by a scarily good AI narration algorithm. This thing is way better than it has any right to be, and I have never heard a text-to-speech algorithm that works anywhere near as good as this thing. Sometimes it gets inflections wrong, sometimes it's a little wonky, but 95% of the time, it's perfectly listenable. This guide was originally published in March 2012. Since then, hundreds of students, and even non-students, have created their own personal websites using it. 
And the reason I have this on my list is because for me, one of my top priorities and values in life is daily low level movement, walks and bike rides, in addition to my sessions in the gym and more intense exercise. For me, this is a non-negotiable priority in my life. And when I go for these walks and bike rides, I love to listen to usually audiobooks so I can keep learning or keep myself entertained while I'm out on them. Right now, I'm actually listening to a book called Walkable City, which is kind of making me hate the way that we Americans design our cities, but I digress. Sometimes, I'm on my computer, I come across an article, and I wanna read that, but I also wanna go out for a walk or a bike ride. So Audioblogs lets me turn that article into a podcast narration and listen to it while I do that. Next up on our list, we've got uBlock Origin, which is a great lightweight ad blocking extension for most browsers. There are a lot of ad blockers out there. I like uBlock Origin because it is, again, lightweight. It doesn't use a lot of resources. And if you want, you can add sites to a whitelist so you can support them and see their ads if you know you trust them. But I have long held that an ad blocking extension is almost as necessary for computer security as an antivirus program. And here's why. A lot of website owners do not place their own ads. They have third party ad placement extensions that they put on their pages and they trust a third party to place those ads. And there have been many instances where those third party networks have placed ads that contain malware or exploits. So I am not going to trust my computer security to every website in the world that I happen to go to. I use an ad blocker as a default and then I whitelist sites if I trust them. And one other really nice thing that uBlock Origin lets me do is add filters which can block certain elements of websites. For instance, that what's happening section on Twitter is all always full of these like sensationalist headlines that just suck me in and waste a ton of my time. I never wanna see what's happening on Twitter ever again. And luckily in the My Filter section of uBlock Origin, I can paste this little line of code and that is exactly what happens. It gets hidden and that is just, Readwise, the next extension on our list is Readwise. And if you've seen my previous videos, you will know that I absolutely love Readwise. This is a wonderful highlighter app that allows you to make highlights from Kindle books, from podcast episodes, from actual print books if you use their phone app with the uh, camera and the built-in text recognition feature, and in anything that you read on the internet. With the extension installed, all you need to do is highlight some text, right click, and send that highlight to Readwise. And this is a great way to keep a collection of the things that you want to remember. If you saw my iPad productivity video from a couple of months ago, you will know that I talked about an app called Command on the iPad, which is a browser that lets you make highlights that actually stay on the web page, even if you refresh, and then automatically sends those highlights over to Readwise, which is freaking sweet, and I really wish that Command was on desktop browsers. Unfortunately, it's not, but uh, for now, we at least have the Readwise extension, which, while it won't leave those highlights on the web page, will send them to your Readwise account, and if you have one of their sync options turned on, can send the highlights over to Remnote or Rome Research, or if you're like me, to Notion. And while we're talking about Readwise, we also have to talk about Pocket, which is the next extension on our list. Unlike Readwise, Pocket is an extension that just lets you save web pages. Readwise really wants you to make a selection and kind of save a snippet of text. Pocket is just for like, eh, I wanna save this cool web page that I found for later. And that's exactly what I use it for. If I come across an article that I don't have time to read and wanna read later, or if I come across just like a, a cool app that I wanna share with my audience, I will hit that Pocket button in my browser and it saves it to my little Pocket list, which I can go and review later on. And another cool thing about Pocket is their mobile apps have the ability to download articles for offline reading. So if you're somebody who commutes on the subway or you take a lot of flights or you somehow have a lot of time where you're offline, Pocket can be a really, really useful app and extension combo. Next up on our list, we have an extension called Notion Boost. So as you probably know, if you follow this channel or my other channel, Thomas Frank Explains, uh, I am a huge user of Notion. I basically run my entire business through it. I've got my task management in it and I write all my articles and do all my research in it. I absolutely love Notion. But there is a feature that I have wished Notion would add for a really long time, and it's a feature that's in a lot of other note-taking and writing apps. That is a floating, sticky outline. I want to be able to see all of my headings and be able to zoom to them, and a lot of other apps have this. Google Docs has it, Dropbox Paper has it, Obsidian has it, Slight has it. Unfortunately, Notion does not. They do have the table of contents block, but when you put that somewhere, it just stays where you put it, and you have to scroll up to find it. Not that useful. So Notion Boost adds Notion, at least in the browser, to that hollowed collection of apps that have the beautiful uh, sticky floating outline on the sidebar. It does a few other things as well, but that 
is absolutely the coolest thing for me that it does. I've got a lot of really long articles I write in Notion. I've got huge research documents and having that sticky sidebar is really, really nice for being able to zoom to different sections. Next up, we have web clippers. There are web clippers for Notion, for Evernote, and for OneNote. And these extensions basically take the entire content of a web page, or at least the you know text part, and port it over to the note-taking app that you're using. Now, personally, I don't use web clippers very often because I've got a combination of other apps that basically do the same thing for me. If I want to make sure a bunch of tabs are saved in my resource section, well, I've got Workona for that. If I'm reading an article and I want to highlight something, I've got Readwise for that. And if I want to just, you know, put something in my big jumble of stuff that I can go look at later, I've got Pocket for that. But for some people, a web clipper is going to be the thing that fits the bill. So we're mentioning it here, and I'm going to mention specifically the ones for Notion, OneNote, and Evernote, because they're the ones that I know about. Before I move on to the next extension on our list, which might possibly be the most useful one for most people watching this video, I do want to say that if you're enjoying this video, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. I've actually got a brand new best note-taking apps video in the works that's going to compare some of the newcomers like Rome Research and Obsidian with our old standards. So if you like these kind of videos, that one is coming in the very near future and you're going to want to be subscribed so you don't miss it. Plus, according to my analytics, only 30% of you are actually subscribed when you watch my content. And I know every YouTuber says that these days, it's kind of a trope, but subscribing really does help support the channel and push it out to more people on this platform. So if you do enjoy this content and you want to help support it, you want to help support me as a creator, uh, consider hitting that subscribe button and thank you if you do. All right, next extension on our list is called Newsfeed Eradicator for Facebook. Even though it says for Facebook in the title, this is an extension that can eradicate the newsfeed in a ton of different social media websites, in YouTube, in Twitter, in LinkedIn, and Facebook. Instagram may not be on the list there, but uh, most of the distraction usual suspects are. And all you gotta do is hit a little checkbox and the feed on that website is going to be uh, deleted, essentially. It's gonna be hidden. So that allows you to use social media if you're somebody like me who needs to make posts on social media or you wanna check your mentions and engage with your audience without getting sucked into your feed. It's something that I keep on almost all the time, only turning off if I really want to check the feed for a specific reason. And that brings us to our last extension of the day, which is called Reader View. And Reader View, like the Reader View on Mobile Safari, takes a page full of distracting elements and boils it down to its essentials, namely the content that you want to read. It also gives you typography options, which is pretty sweet. You can change the font size, you can change the line height. It's pretty nice. Now, some web designers, like yours truly, designer websites so extensions like this aren't needed. If you go onto any of my websites, College Info Geek, Thomas J. Frank, we've got single column, minimalist, distraction-free columns of text. It's designed for pleasurable reading. But designers like me seem to be in the minority. It seems like almost every website out there these days has a pop-up asking you to subscribe to their email newsletter, there's a sidebar, there's mid-content ads, all kinds of crap that is just distracting and makes the page load slower. So an extension like Reader View is really really nice for being able to get rid of all of that and just read the thing that you came to read. And there are a couple of other cool features as well built in. There's a dark mode filter and actually some light theming options. There is a text to speech mode, which is honestly pretty bad. I would just use audio blogs if you really want that. But there's also a built in highlighter and like in command, the highlights you make persist even if you refresh the page. Now it's not gonna send your highlights to Readwise as well. So there is a couple of different actions to take if you want both those things to happen. That's why command is still the gold standard standard for researchers as far as I'm concerned, but it is pretty cool having that highlighter feature at least. So for all this video, we've talked about extensions that can make you work more productively on the internet. But what about making the internet work more productively for you? Well, that's exactly what happens when you have your own online presence, where you can connect with people, where you have your own platform, where you own your content, and where you can maybe make connections with potential employers, potential clients, people who you could work with. That's exactly what I do on my website, thomasjfrank.com. It shows off my work and helps me to build my personal brand. And if you haven't started building an online presence for yourself, it's something you should definitely think about and at least take the first step to doing, which is getting your own domain name. Even if you're not ready to build your own website yet, getting that domain name locked down is crucial because if somebody goes out and registers it before you can get it, well, you're kind of out of luck. That's how I am with thomasfrank.com. I couldn't get that, so I at least got thomasjfrank.com, but that could have been taken as well. So as soon as you can, go over to Hover and register yourself a domain name. 
Hover is a great place to do it because unlike a lot of other places out there, they have a completely hassle-free and speedy checkout process. They're not trying to upsell you on a bunch of stuff like a lot of other websites and registers are. They also have over 400 extensions to choose from. Your .coms and .mes, which are great for your professional presence, but also more fun ones like .lol and .ninja. I use thomas.lol for my uh, music stuff. And once you have your domain, they also have a feature called Connect, which lets you easily hook that domain up to online website builders and online store builders. So if you're ready to claim your domain, make sure nobody else can take it, go on over to hover.com slash Thomas Frank to buy it. With your first purchase using that URL, you're gonna get 10% off and you're gonna be able to support my channel. I work really hard to make sure that my content is research backed and detailed and has a high production value. And because most of the stuff that I create is free, supporting the sponsors who support me is actually the best way to support this channel if that's something you wanna do. And if it is, thank you. Uh, beyond that, make sure you're subscribed to this channel if you like content like this and you wanna see some more in the future. Like I said, I've got that note-taking app comparison coming up. That's a much more detailed topic than this one, but I'm hoping to get it up in the next month or two. And if you would, hit that like button. YouTube's algorithm absolutely uses engagement factors like likes and comments when it's determining how far to push a video. So big thanks to you if you do hit that button. And uh, if you have other extension recommendations you wanna make, let me know down in the comments. Let me know what I missed. Let me know what's good for other browsers. And beyond that, I've got a couple of other videos right here and here you can check out. Make sure you're subscribed right there or don't do any of that and go, uh, I don't know, drive a motorcycle off of a ramp through a bunch of flaming hoops like Evil Knievel, because as always, I'm not your dad. But I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.